hi, my name is uh, Neil Pickles. I'm a director of Alchemy College of Audio Engineering. Uh, I also run a freelance audio engineering business called Reveal Sound, which primarily does mastering. Yeah, well, my approach is uh, fundamentally to, if I haven't recorded the track myself, is to listen through to the multi-track first and try and identify the key melodic elements and what the song's actually about, uh, which things are the important hooks uh, and things like that. You do then do a rough level and balance pan, so I've got the uh, the track sort of laid out in front of me. Then I kind of think about well, how I'm going to approach dealing with that. Um, primarily I use plugins for mixing with a smattering of high quality outboard on things like the mix bus and the drum bus and if something's been very badly recorded sometimes I like to route it through some outboard uh, to get valve harmonic distortion things like that uh, but primarily I like to use uh, plugins because uh, it's it's quick it's instantly recallable uh, it's accessible and the sound quality is very good but the reason why I personally purchased my own card is having used them in the college, you know, for the for the mastering lectures, it was very good. Um, I can't possibly have every single classic, uh, you know, uh, mastering compressor. Um, a slightly unusual approach, which I've started at the moment since such I've got the UAD card, is uh, I kind of like to imagine I'm using a desk. Um, when I first started to mix with plugins, I'd have lots of different plugins and you know different people all over the shop. And um, I kind of sort of remembered that when you used to mix almost entirely on something like an SSL uh, with, a, with a small smattering of out outboard gear or different EQs, um, you got a certain kind of different kind of sound really. So I've started to kind of do that again and um, I found the UAD plugins to be very good for this, you know, the new uh, SSL um, uh, E-series channel strip for example. You know, if I've got a sort of punchy pop song I'd like to work on, I'll literally put one of those on every single channel. And I find you get a, a sort of really coherent sound and a much more sort of, you know, desk-like sound from doing that, which is kind of interesting. You know, the, the real SSL was known for its focus in the mid-range, and of course the plug-in emulation does that too. So, you know, that's what I'd lean towards. And obviously a, a Neve can be smoother. With the UAD range, I can do things like if I want to set up an API desk, I effectively can. You know, I can use the API EQs, I can use the graphic on the kick drum, which is kind of cool. Recently, it's quite interesting, I got into a bit of a rut using the same reverbs all the time. I think getting the UAD card's been pretty cool. It's just opened up some really high quality uh, processors to me, uh, like the Lexicon 224 and the plate, which I've found to be really impressive. At the college, the, um, luckily, uh, we've got the, all of the plugins on uh, most of the systems. We just introduced UAD cards to our main SSL room uh, and uh, our Duality and our G Series room and the workstations. And uh, it's just really great to be able to access uh, what are basically, I'd say, the best emulations of those uh, kind of kind of real real outboard items. So I discovered recently, for example, um, this little lapse uh, is available in UAD, and that seems to be pretty unique. Uh, to the UAD platform and uh, I was told about that by a, a friend of mine called Alan Hopkinson who mixes Tool front of house and they've got a tremendous thunderous bass and he basically used a, a real little labs to analog line up the uh, DI and, and the mics on the uh, you know on, on the bass and um, I've kind of been looking for that really because sometimes you have a bass guitar that's been uh, you know recorded um, DI'd and amped, but of course there's, there's a slight time delay, but even when you align the time, sometimes the phase doesn't seem to tighten up, so um, that's kind of an exclusive plugin as far as I can tell, and it's been really great to be able to get hold of that. I've got most of the access to most of the original units, so I'm in a fortunate position that I share my room with a, a guy called Marcel van Limbeck, who collects outboard, basically. And uh, yeah, I'd say they are the best emulations of, of the real units. Um, I still like using the real units, there's a sort of visceral thing to using them, um, but there's also time costs, maintenance costs, you know, um, one of my units currently, for example, is, is, is away on maintenance because the valves have gone, you just don't get that with, with a plug-in, and also in this day and age, people want stuff turned around, they want to make tweaks so quickly, so I, I tend to try and keep um, largely in the box with the UADs because I believe they're the best emulations available of, of the outboard that I like and uh, I still like to use a smattering of outboard across key things like drum buses, mix buses, uh, specific items um, but then you know use stuff like the, the UAD for the bulk of the, the heavy lifting really. Yeah, yeah uh, I think I do have a, a number of uh, favourite plugins and there's other plugins I'm looking forward to to explore. Uh, the lexicons just blown me away. Uh, a lot of the 
sort of things that claim to be lexicon like presets on other plugins don't really sound like a lexicon i've got a real one here and this one does it has the sort of nice bright kind of cool expensive sounding lush tails and i, I just kind of like that and lexicon's never been too realistic but i just like the sound of them and there's this plate which i just think is phenomenal i didn't i did have plate presets but i think this is the best sounding thing i've got which is awesome the little labs i've mentioned and this this trident i've just been blown away by the uh the trident um it's a little bit uh less conventional a bit less obvious than the, the ssls i've mentioned um you know but it, it's just such a, a good fun eq i've done an entire mix pretty much on nothing but trident channels trying to imagine i'm on a on a trident desk which is kind of cool and it got a great sound and this one i haven't really delved into but it's really interesting uh that's why i've put it up here it's ocean way studios um it's kind of a you know okay we've heard about convolution and things before but it was just really interesting uh what they're looking at here i think this could be the beginning uh you know of a new kind of uh a new kind of plugin i think you need the best tools that's one thing um they're, they're not all plugins are created equal um i do think it's good to have the best uh, of available equipment but there's other advice um not related to equipment such as don't sell yourself short you know a lot of people um once they finish say a, uh, a college such as alchemy where i teach uh, they're too keen to offer themselves absolutely for free and you know they have a value and um, you've got to try and get something from a band if you're going to produce or record them. Um, if you don't have anything, even if it's an exchange of services, uh, you know, someone plays a really cool guitar on your songs, it shows respect to you and your skills. If you don't get that, then, uh, you know, I'm afraid that, that it's, it's going to be a, a very one-way street and you're going to get taken advantage of. So, um, you know, if you do do something for free, in inverted commas, make sure that you are getting something from it, whether it be training from the guy or person that you're assisting uh, or if it's working for a band to try and hone your skills that the band are giving you something back in return whether that's money or an exchange of services doesn't matter it just shows that there's um uh th there is an acceptance of your value if there's no if there's no return then they don't value you and you're going to have a, a, a bad time um I think even experienced engineers will often say the jobs they did as a favour or for less money than they'd normally charge invariably turn into the uh, the, the biggest ball aches, basically, you know. Um, so, um, yeah, you've got to have the good gear, but I think you've also got to respect yourself and, and your skills and, and where you're at, basically.